What's up everybody? Welcome back to the East Coast PC channel. Today we have a video about a, what I feel is a very important topic to do with the new NVIDIA RTX graphics cards. Hardly none of the mainstream tech tubers have even mentioned this in a notable fashion. A few people have talked about it very briefly and one or two has done some brief testing on it, but nobody's really talked about the biggest issue and how close we are to hitting the edge. So before we get started, if there's anybody that's watching this video that's not subscribed, please make sure each and every one of you get subscribed. It helps us out so much to reach our goals and to be able to get products to review and test and to help each and every one of you with your buying decisions. All right, so it's kind of unfortunate the circumstances about which we had to make this video because the RTX 3090, even though it's priced extremely you know insane in my opinion it does have a lot of vram but even though it is still an excellent card the 3080 is an excellent card and the 3070 is an excellent card we're not going to be talking about the 3060 much because that doesn't fall under the same vram issue that the other cards do now a lot of people online and on youtube are telling you well most of the time eight gigs of ram 10 gigs of ram is going to be enough but what i can tell you from my testing we are currently working on getting some good charting software and soon we will be able to put this stuff in charts that I can show you on screen. But what I did for now is I've been testing two main games, one without RTX, one with RTX. And Doom Eternal, even without any ray tracing whatsoever, maxed out settings at 4K, I'm running a 2080 Ti, I have 11 gigs of VRAM. That game runs over eight gigs of VRAM. It runs like, the game says it takes up 7.75 gigs itself. And with the small amount of VRAM that your Windows and small other programs take up, you run over eight gigs extremely easy. So what happens when you run over eight gigs, like with a 3070, then it absolutely tanks performance. Now, uh, playing a 3070 would normally be able to play um, Doom Eternal at 4K, just like the 2080 Ti can, because they're both got about the same amount of GPU horsepower. The difference is this card has 11 gigs of RAM, and the 3070 has 8 gigs of RAM. And the 3070 is not a marketed for a 4K card. It is just a mid-range card. But th this is just the first example of how we are already exceeding or on the very edge of VRAM limits. And if you go down to 1440p, it's not going to change much. You're still going to be very close to that VRAM limit. Now, when you get to Cyberpunk 2077, the other game that I'm going to be talking about, this is where things get very, very, you know, kind of bad and it, it just didn't make sense for them to do this in my opinion because these cars this is the second generation of rtx cars everything about their branding is rtx and in my opinion rightfully so i love ray tracing i'm an absolute sucker for ray tracing it's not the best thing for competitive games and all that but it, it just you can just crank the eye candy up to levels previously that was just not seen in video game graphics i absolutely love ray tracing problem is is like I said, these cards are branded around RTX and ray tracing. Well, the first generation cards like my Turing based 2080 Ti, when that came out, uh, not a single game supported it. Battlefield 5, I think, came out a few weeks later. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider followed and, and then Metro Exodus. Well, all three of them games only support one type of ray tracing. So Metro Exodus supports global illumination. Shadow of the Tomb Raider sh supports Ray Trace Shadows and um, Battlefield 5 supports Ray Trace Reflections. Now, when you only have one type of Ray Traced setting going on, it's not going to consume that much VRAM. But when you have up to five, which a Cyberpunk 2077 has, Fortnite has four, the modern games are starting to have more and more types of ray tracing and that's good even if we don't turn them all on because they are extremely taxing the lss you know helps out so much in the performance aspect of it but even if we don't turn them all on it's so nice to have them my biggest problem here is 
when you have these cards that's marketed for that and then you crank the VRAM up and you're literally right on the edge of the VRAM limit. So in my testing in Cyberpunk 2077, I have a 4K monitor, an excellent LG 27G and 950 behind me. So with my 2080 Ti, lately I have only been playing with only one ray trace setting on it. That's ray trace, ray trace reflections. I have been playing at 4K target resolution. You set it to 4K, but when you put it in DLSS performance mode, it actually renders the game at 1080p and upscales it to 4K. That's what you need to do to get in the mid 50s, 55, 58 frames a second, sometimes low 50, somewhere in the 50s frames per second so I can stay above 48 and stay in that G-Sync range. That's what I need to do with my current graphics card. With that, with them settings, with only one type of ray tracing, which is ray trace reflections enabled, I am literally at nine and a half gigs of VRAM. Now, we buy a brand new 3080 today, tomorrow, yesterday, last week, that is targeted for 4K gaming. It, they basically marketed that as the replacement to the 2080 Ti. Now, they even put the GA102 die GPU in there, which has always been reserved for the Titans and the 2080 Ti's. They brought that down, they cut it down a little bit, uh, close to 20% or whatever. Um, but they put the 102 die in there. That's excellent. But then, going forward, even though the last two generations had 11 gigs of VRAM that gave us extra VRAM, enough to work with, we didn't have to worry about it. So now when we really need the VRAM, they slice a gig off of it. And I just think this is absolute insanity. I think each and every one of you should be aware of this when you're buying any of these RTX cards. Now, to be clear, I'm not telling you not to buy these RTX cards because they're the, the only NVIDIA cards that's available at the moment. And I think they're great cards. I'm trying to buy one right now, I'm trying to buy one of the 3080s. But I already know that it's going to be a short-lived card for me when the 3080 Ti hopefully comes out this summer that will have the same amount of CUDA cores as the 3090. I will be selling this card and buying that card. Now, for most of you out there, you know, you try to get a video card to last anywhere between two to five years, I would say, for most normal people. The extreme gamers, probably two years. You know, pretty serious gamers might try to get skip a generation and get one every other generation or whatever. But... Um, when I turn on just two more ray trace settings, when I turn on um, ray trace ambient occlusion and ray trace diffuse illumination, so in Cyberpunk 2077, it's, uh, both of them are under RTX uh, lighting. So when you turn it on just a medium setting, uh, that turns on medium ray trace ambient occlusion and medium ray trace diffuse illumination along with the standard on because there's only on and off for the reflections. I am going over 10 gigs of VRAM, uh, and that is just, you know, that would completely saturate the, um, the buffer in the RTX 3080. Um, there's only a few areas where it actually goes over 10 gigs. Most of the time it's right around it, but one way I easily went over 10 gigs to like 10.3 or 10.4 was where I had some other programs open on my computer. They weren't doing anything. They were just sitting there open. Totally would have saturated the frame buffer in the RTX 3080. Now the 3070, go back to talk about that one for a minute. That card um, only has eight gigs of VRAM. And like I said, it's not targeted at 4K resolution. Most people are buying that card or buying it, you know, for 1440p uh, ultra wide or maybe even uh, 240 or 360 hertz uh, refresh rate 1080p monitors. So that card, I, you know, it's, it's still a very big deal in my opinion. We, we are on the cusp of exceeding these frame buffers, even without, like as Doom Eternal demonstrates, even without ray tracing turned on. So if you're buying one of these cards and you're expecting it to last a good while, I, I just want everybody to think about this and really put a lot of thought into this before spending the money on it. And NVIDIA, I think even realizes now that they have messed up. Now, we're going to be honest with ourselves. Part of the reason why they re they're releasing the 3060 up in February with 12 gigs of RAM, the 3060 with 12 gigs of RAM, the basic bottom mid-range basic gaming card uh, without going to the low end of the 50 series has 12 gigs of RAM and a high-end 
3080 that is geared at 4K gaming only has 10 gigs of RAM. That I, I mean, to me, that is just absolute insanity. Like I've said before, the 3080 has over five or about 5,000 more CUDA cores than the 3060 does. So I think what's going to happen, this 3060 is going to get released. Then we're going to have the 3080 Ti suppo supposedly, uh, it, well, it got delayed indefinitely. Gamers Nexus did an exclusive on that. And then uh, a guy named Red Gaming Tech, he came back and reported that, uh, that it was still coming. It was just coming supposedly around June when Gamers Nexus said delayed indefinitely. Basically indefinitely just means until further notice or until we get ready to release it. Um, from what I'm hearing, that has mostly to do with the graphics card shortages. They don't want to release another graphics card uh, with all the shortages going on and people ain't even going to be able to buy them. Now that card should have... 20 gigs of RAM if the recent rumors will be true. And that's great. That we have all this racing tracing. We don't necessarily need or have to have 20 gigs of RAM right now, but to help these cards last two, four, or five years, and with all the stuff you're marketing it for, ray tracing, that it's time to step these cards up in VRAM. And it just really, really sucks that the 3070 and the 3080s uh, got, you know, stuck with that low frame buffer I, I'm I'm just you know distraught about it and I wanted to make this video to just educate everybody on the situation and to let each and every one of you that don't pay that much attention to how much VRAM you're using know how close on the cusp we, we are to you know exceeding these frame buffers and what I recommend each and every one of you do is download GPUZ it's a absolute free utility and if you download that and you just click on the sensors tab, then just leave that open, start gaming, play your game, uh, and then you can go back and look and basically real time, when your game gets done, you'll be able to see a graph of how much VRAM it used over the past few minutes. And that'll tell you uh, about how close you are to exceeding your frame buffer. Now, one other thing you will hear other tech tubers talk about is sometimes it's hard to tell uh, it, sometimes a game will call for way more VRAM than it needs, but most of the time you can still tell the difference. And what I mean by this, uh, in Far Cry 5, for example, I think, I haven't played this in a while, but I, it uses in the range of 5 to 6 gigs of VRAM at 4K on uh, ultra settings. That's what the game says that you need when you're uh, dialing up your settings. Uh, that's what it says you need. For, for them settings. Of course, I have almost doubled that on my 2080 Ti. That's basically what it's saying it's going to use. Now, when you go into GPU-Z on Far Cry 5, it is going to call for all of that VRAM. Uh, I think it actually calls for up to 16 gigs of VRAM, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Titan RTX and the 3090 are the only one that it won't call for all of the RAM, but it's actually probably only using somewhere in the range of five to six gigs of VRAM, just like the settings menu says it will. So most of the time, you can look at those two things, GPU-Z and the settings menu to tell how much VRAM you're gonna use and then go back to, unless it's like Far Cry 5, you can go back to GPU-Z to verify how much VRAM you're using. So that about wraps this video up, guys. Um, I'm hoping I uh, got the best information I could to y'all without showing y'all the actual charts. Thank each and every one of y'all for watching this video. I'm sorry. If y'all heard the cat crying, I had to lock her in the room. She, she was just going absolutely nuts trying to tear my table and set up all the pieces. Um, but if any of you are not subscribed, like I said, please make sure you get subscribed. Make sure you drop, if you like the video, if you don't mind, drop a like. And also hit that bell icon. Make sure it's solid so you get notified for each and every one of our videos. Thank each and every one of y'all so much, and we will see you guys soon.